Well, welcome to day 11 of our journey through this book, The New City Catechism, 52 questions and answers about the Christian life. Um, if you've not yet got a copy of this book, why not do that? Uh, you can get go to tenofthose.com and the, it's available there to buy. But we are working through each of these questions. So day 11 means question 11. And as you may remember, we are in the Ten Commandments at the moment. So question 11 is this. What does God require in the sixth, seventh and eighth commandments? Here's the answer. It's a long one. Sixth, that we do not hurt or hate or be hostile to our neighbour, but be patient and peaceful, pursuing even our enemies with love. Seventh, that we abstain from sexual immorality and live purely and faithfully, whether in marriage or in single life, avoiding all impure actions, looks, words, thoughts or desires, and whatever might lead to them. Eighth, that we do not take without permission that which belongs to someone else, nor withhold any good from someone we might benefit. What does God require in the sixth, seventh and eighth commandments? Six, that we do not hurt or hate or be hostile to our neighbour, but be patient and peaceful, pursuing even our enemies with love. Seventh, that we abstain from sexual immorality and live purely and faithfully, whether in marriage or in single life, avoiding all impure actions, looks, words, thoughts or desires, and whatever might lead to them. Eighth, that we do not take without permission that which belongs to someone else, nor withhold any good from someone we might benefit. And the reading this morning is from Romans chapter 13, verse 9, a verse which sums up those commandments. Romans 13, verse 9. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be, are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbour as yourself. The reflection this morning is written by Stephen Um. What we find in Jesus' interpretation in the Sermon on the Mount is that the standards of the law are much higher than we had assumed. It's not just not committing adultery and not murdering and not stealing. Jesus says in interpreting the sixth commandment that if you harbour bitterness, if you're unable to forgive someone, then you've murdered that person in your heart. He also says that if you lust in your heart, you're breaking the seventh commandment and committing adultery. And you are being greedy if you're materialistic and you're not radically generous. So Jesus raises the bar of the commandments to the highest level. Martin Luther said that when there is a negative prohibition in the Ten Commandments, a positive implication is assumed. Therefore, when it says that you ought not to murder, it also means that you ought to radically love others, even neighbours and enemies. And when it says you ought not to commit adultery, the assumption is that you're supposed to be faithful to your wife or to your husband and to recognise sexuality as a beautiful gift from God. And therefore, if you're in a marriage relationship, you ought to recognise that it is a covenantal commitment between a man and a woman. When it says that you ought not to steal, the understanding is that you ought to be radically generous. These are the responsibilities that Christians have in responding to the Ten Commandments. But the problem is that we're unable to obey them perfectly. So how are we going to resolve that tension? Well, Jesus Christ is the second Adam, the true Israel, the individual divine corporate head and representative who has come to fulfill the obligations of the law perfectly in himself. Therefore, we can live without fear of rejection from God for our disobedience or lack of perfection. We know that Jesus Christ has accomplished all these things, fulfilling the requirements of the law perfectly for us. 
don't know about you, but I find Luther's observation about the law uh, really helpful uh, and challenging. Wherever there is a negative prohibition in the Ten Commandments, a positive implication is assumed. That's quite helpful, isn't it? Uh, so do not murder also means do love others, our neighbours and even our enemies. Uh, and the command do not commit adultery also means do be faithful and pure in the area of our sexuality. Uh, and the command do not steal also means do be radically generous. I wonder which one of those positive implications, those positive applications of the Ten Commandments, of, the, of those three commandments in particular, which one do you most need to concentrate on and put into practice today? Do love others, even neighbours and enemies. Do be faithful and pure in the area of sexuality. And do be radically generous. Let's pray, shall we? Father, thank you for the challenge we have had today through these prohibitions to be more like Jesus, the one who kept the law completely on our behalf. Help us to be more loving to others, even those we don't get on with. Help us to be faithful if we're married and pursue purity, whatever our status. Help us to be radically generous today and in the weeks to come uh, and not to steal from others by being stingy or holding back. And thank you that we can strive to be godly, to, to be these things, knowing that Jesus has kept the law for us and we are not condemned for our failure, but we're forgiven and we're accepted in him. Thank you for him who lived the life we could not live who kept the law fully and perfectly on our behalf. In his name we pray. Amen. Have a great day and see you tomorrow.